For frontline support in Star Citizen, few ships come more to mind than the Hercules from Crusader. But this video is not about that, it's about what it can carry. For those times where door kicking just isn't enough and you'd rather just level the entire block, Tumbrel has a solution for you. It's called the Nova Tank, and it's Star Citizen's first operational main battle tank, making its way to the verse as of 313.1. And in today's video, that's exactly what we're going to be taking a look at. We'll put it through its paces and give you a tour of the inside and out. And if you like this video and you think I deserve it by the end, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Otherwise, grab hold of something, because this thing's got no gravity generators. The Nova Tank delivers a number of weapons to the battlefield, including 24 size 3 air-to-ground and air-to-air -air missiles, a commander turret with two size 2 hardpoints, and of course, a gigantic size 5 ballistic cannon capable of delivering 26,000 alpha damage. And you can deliver that heavy ordnance at up to 1.8 kilometers, meaning that you could hit targets before they even know you're there. And the turret also comes equipped with a gyro assist mode, allowing you to stay focused on a target regardless of the direction of the body or the movement of the tank. Much like what we have today with modern tanks like the Abrams. But sometimes it's not about the distance you can engage a target, it's about shock and awe. And the Tumbrel Nova delivers here as well. Its tracks can deliver it up to a top speed of 20 meters per second or around 44 miles per hour. For reference, that's just a little bit faster than an M1A2 Abrams. And of course, being a tracked vehicle, it's also capable of reaching locations that wheeled vehicles would find difficult, allowing commanders to position their tanks in unexpected locations to rain death and destruction upon their unsuspecting foes. One thing that may not be immediately apparent through the video though is just how large the Nova actually is. With a width of 7 meters and a length of 16 meters, it certainly isn't compact, and it won't fit on anything like a Cutlass. And with a height of 5 meters, it makes it so it won't fit on things like a Valkyrie. Which is why you're going to need an M2 or C2 Hercules from Crusader, the same ship I showed you guys in the intro, to carry one or three of these around. And when it comes to tanks, more tanks does mean more better. So you'd probably want something the size of a Hercules anyway to allow your friends to tag along with you. And speaking of which, a commander is ideally going to want two other friends to drive the tank with them, as you'll need one driver, one gunner, and obviously a commander to sit atop the commander turret. That's not to say though that you can't operate the Nova alone. In fact, you can operate it solo from the driver's seat by simply hitting G while driving to remotely command the top turret. This allows you to aim the turret wherever you're looking, but of course you can only really aim at what you can see and thus you're cutting off most of your field of view in doing so. The driver can also completely control the turret if they desire, however this means that you have to stop moving as you can no longer drive well in the turret mode. So that means that you're not only losing visibility, but you're losing mobility when you want to completely control the turret. Finally, the turret itself has a maximum rotation rate that cannot be circumvented by increasing your mouse sensitivity, and thus by not having a commander in the commander turret, you're going to be reducing your battlefield awareness in a real world situation, opening yourself up to being hit on your flank and being defeated. And finally, it's worth noting here that the commander turret is the only turret that has anti-infantry weaponry, as the main weapon has no coaxial machine gun, something that you should be sincerely worried about if you're going up against infantry. Before I take you guys through the real world performance of the Nova tank, let's first take a look at the last part of the vehicle, its interior. It can be accessed through a hatch located at the rear of the tank. Entering, you'll discover that the interior is a great deal more spacious than you may have assumed. Here you'll have access directly to its three size zero shields and its three size zero power plants, as well as its two size zero coolers. This allows the crew to both fix and replace these components on the fly while in the field. You'll also find four gun racks in the inside of the tank, allowing the crew to arm themselves in the event they may need to dismount during an operation. Moving forward, the main turret is operated from a remote position in the center of the tank. Here the operator can access optics as well as an MFD screen to get a readout on the tank's current status. 
Moving further forward, you'll find two more seats. The driver's seat on the left and the commander's seat on the right, which mans that top commander turret. Here you'll have a full sensor suite allowing you to sweep the battlefield for possible enemies, including scanning for enemy air assets. And in case you're curious, yes, that is a window, though I imagine this is actually a holographic 3D monitor, as there is no window from the outside. But what about the Nova Tank's real-world performance? How does it actually work when you take it up against other players and ships? In practice, the Slayer Cannon is devastating to enemy air assets. If it hits anything smaller than a Cutlass Black, it's going to explode. It tends to go straight through shields in most cases, due to the fact that it's ballistic. Ballistics in Star Citizen tend to strike through shields once shields get closer to zero. As you can see here with the C2, despite the fact that its shields were not depleted, the round went straight through and into the hull, potentially directly damaging systems and engines without actually destroying the ship. As Star Citizen continues to develop, this is going to become more and more important as penetration becomes more of an issue. This can cause decompressions and directly damage interior life support, thus potentially rendering a ship or vehicle inoperable. However, I did say real-world performance, and that was just a demonstration. This is actual combat. We were trying to do a tank battle when we were interrupted by a C2 player who was trying to ram us and destroy us, interrupting our festivities. While the elevation of the tank right now is limited to 30 degrees, I do hope they change that, the three tanks we had ready for the battle that was interrupted luckily were able to get enough of a firing solution to take down this C2 before it did any damage to any of the tanks that we had deployed. This was actually all without using the size 3 anti-air missiles that all three tanks came equipped with, which would have added something to the fight. Finally, they didn't have any commanders in their turrets, and those six size 2 weapons definitely would have put up a fight. We also tried to use the tank in the game for a mission. There are a couple missions where you have to assault a fortified position on a bunker. It can be difficult to approach if you're approaching them in a small aircraft, but if you go on the ground, it's sometimes a bit easier. In the case of using a Nova tank, they destroy those defensive turrets extremely quickly. And I think that this hints at the fact that when Colonial Outposts become a thing later this year, that these tanks will be a devastating tool for assaulting and holding them. And I suspect that if you're a criminal wanting to break a friend out of prison, that they may too prove an extremely useful tool in this case as well. Eventually though, after regrouping, we were able to make our way over to the savannas of Hurston to finally have our tank duel. In this scenario, we had both tanks fully crewed with three members, a driver, a commander, and a gunner. Unfortunately, this is where we started to discover the issues with the current form of the Nova tank, and this is something that's likely to change before it goes live. As you can see, the Nova tank didn't take more than a single hit, and we found this a little suspicious, so we decided to do some testing. We first decided to try to test the Nova tank's defenses against a shoulder-mounted railgun, and discovered that it would die in just two shots regardless of where it was being shot from, front or rear. So then we hypothesized that the shields were the only thing really protecting the Nova. We decided to turn it off and test it, and lo and behold, it dies in a single shot from a railgun. And if that wasn't bad enough, we decided to just test out the Ursa, which is not even really a combat vehicle, it only has two size 1 weapons, to see how quickly it could take out a Nova tank to really decide whether or not it's sufficiently defended. And, well, as you can see, in about 10 seconds flat, the Ursa took out the Nova tank. Clearly, there's something wrong here. This has unfortunately led me to conclude that at least at the moment, the Nova tank is a rather flimsy weapons platform. However, I think that this is likely due to the fact that the armor systems in Star Citizen aren't fully yet implemented. We've only got one ship to my knowledge, the Arrow, that actually has some semblance of armor taken into account when in combat. This is supposed to be more than just a simple HP pool. It's supposed to be something more akin to War Thunder where each element of the armor of a vehicle or a ship is taken into account when calculating ballistics, as you may be able to hit directly some of the subcomponents to disable the vessel or vehicle. Overall then, I think the Nova Tank is an extremely fun addition to Star Citizen's ground combat and just Star Citizen in general, and I'm excited to see how people use them in-game for PvP and PvE. I definitely highly recommend you check out one in the upcoming Fleet Week to test it out for yourself, but I'd be cautious about buying it directly with real money, 
as it's probably going to be available in game in the following patch for something like 200,000 AUEC. Only buy it if you're looking to really back the project with real money. That's it for now guys, thanks for watching, I've been Morphologist, I hope to see you guys in the next one.